Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pinterest Performance Plus webinar. And just a quick note before we start, please use the audio settings button in the bottom left corner to adjust your audio options or open this meeting directly in Zoom using the link below. My name is Morali Vradaraj, and I'm a lead product marketing manager at Pinterest. Today, I'm joined by my colleagues, Mikolai Gula and Nick Nikwivenig, who will also be presenting. Let's take a look at the agenda. In 45 minutes, we'll help you maximize performance on Pinterest. First, we'll introduce you to the value of Pinterest Performance Plus. Second, we'll dive into the Pinterest Performance Plus product suite with real success stories about how Performance Plus helps brands drive better media outcomes. Third, we'll guide you through a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to create a Performance Plus campaign. Fourth, we'll review Performance Plus reporting and editing features with best practices. And finally, we'll wrap up with learning resources in Q&A. Let's get into it. We're going to dive into our introduction of Performance Plus. At our annual Pinterest Presents event in October, we announced Pinterest Performance Plus, our suite of automation products to help boost campaign performance and optimize ad impressions with automation and AI. Let's watch an excerpt to get a feel for what Performance Plus is about. Now, I can get the perfect balance of performance and control with AI and automation. I can do all the work, some of the work, and take a load off. Results! Every time I watch that video, I get pumped for how we can get the most out of Pinterest. So let's start with why we built Performance Plus. In the past, manual optimization was required to get the most from your media investments. You'd have to tinker with settings, change bids, update placements. You needed to control those kinds of complex actions. Now, with advances in machine learning and automation, it's easier for all advertisers to succeed in a hands-off way. Those previous tweaks and adjustments that you may have made might actually get in your own way. But that doesn't mean your role is any less important. In this day and age, you should focus on high quality input to feed automation and drive those high quality outputs. Inputs like healthy product feeds, accurate conversion tracking, and engaging creative let Pinterest performance products thrive and ultimately drive better business outcomes like brand affinity, traffic, and sales for your business. Turning on Performance Plus for your consideration, conversions, or catalog sales campaigns changes the create flow to a single page. It removes 50% of the inputs required. It automatically defaults advertisers into a best-in-class campaign setup that defaults to a powerful AI and automation features that drive performance lift. Also, Pinterest Performance Plus campaigns help with brand safety meaning performance gains are not driven from off-platform inventory or reliance on branded keywords. And when you run a Performance Plus campaign, you can be confident your campaigns fall within our rigorous brand safety standards. Even better, most advertisers that tested Performance Plus saw a 10% CPA or CPC improvement relative to their business as usual campaign setup. So Performance Plus campaigns are easier to create, brand safe, and improve performance. The good news is there isn't only one way to engage with the Performance Plus suite. They can be used in two ways. The first way is by turning on Performance Plus at the campaign level to help maximize performance gains. This is where you receive that sort of simplified create flow. We automatically default your campaign to the best in automation and AI that drives performance. The second way is by using Performance Plus product independently in non-Performance Plus campaigns to help improve performance there too. Next, I'll hand off to Nick to discuss the Performance Plus Suite component. Thanks, Morali. Let's dip, dive deeper into the Performance Plus product suite. Uh, just as a note, I am experiencing a little bit of technical issues with my camera, so unfortunately you can't see me, but the most important thing is you can see the slides. So, Pinterest Performance Plus products are designed as automated ways to help get the most from your Pinterest advertising efforts across our multiple objectives. Products like Performance, tar Performance Plus Targeting, Performance Plus Bidding, and Performance Plus Budgets can be leveraged across campaign objectives to help improve media outcomes. 
New features like performance plus ROAS bidding or performance plus creative can be applied to specific objectives as needed to drive lower funnel goals. Let's learn more about some of our new Performance Plus products. For advertisers running Performance Plus or non-Performance Plus catalog sales campaigns, our new product Performance Plus Creative helps drive better results with better visuals and scale. With no additional effort, advertisers can automatically create shopping and collection ads from their catalog and apply generated backgrounds that replace blank or white backgrounds. We want to make your pins more purchasable, more inspiring, and more performant, all with less resources required. It's a tall order, and that's why we're bringing the benefits of generative AI to create engaging imagery at scale, with no photo shoot required from you. With Performance Plus Creative Generated Backgrounds, advertisers can apply generated backgrounds to products in their catalog, replacing blank or white backgrounds to help drive users to action. Most advertisers who tested this feature saw an 11% increase in checkouts and 18% higher ROAS on average when using these generated backgrounds compared to their standard white backgrounds. Performance plus creative optimizations let advertisers automatically create shopping and collection ads from their catalogs to help find the ads that drive the best performance and serve them more often. This way, you're helping reach the right user with the right ad at the right time. Advertisers in our beta testing drove 11% higher click-through rates and 10% lower click cost per clicks when they were using the Performance Plus creative optimizations. The best part, generated backgrounds and creative optimizations operate independently. And why we recommend actually using both, you can use either depending on what your business needs are. Each feature is easily toggled on within the campaign creation flow, so you know exactly what's being used and where and what is not being used. Our newest bidding product, Performance Plus ROAS Bidding, prioritizes driving conversion value versus conversion volume to help improve ROAS. This solution works best if your products have substantially different uh, has has substantial differences in price. Additionally, you'll need to have healthy conversion tracking via the Pinterest Conversions API or the Pinterest tag. And finally, I'll share a little bit extra for the holiday season. We know this time of year brings with it sales and discounts. So we've released our new promotions product to open beta, which offers a variety of promotional messaging options to help your brand pop on Pinterest. You can create and apply promotions at the ad group level to communicate discounts and advertisers using promotions saw a 9% increase in their ROAS compared to ads without the promotion feature. To get access to this feature, please reach out to your Pinterest account team. And with that, I'm gonna hand off to Mikolai to talk us through some of our success stories. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, yes, let me talk you through a couple of great examples of what we've been doing with Performance Plus in the past. Um, and remember, if you have any success cases yourself and you see great things working on your campaigns, make sure to reach out to your account manager and maybe I'll be presenting your success case in the next webinar. So let's take a look at some success cases. First of all, we've got Pandora and then we'll dive into Adidas and also show a success case from Pink Jelek. So... In our first success story, I want to show you what global jewelry brand Pandora did in Australia. Thanks to the new Performance Plus solution, Pandora saw a 73% increase in ROAS and a 44% increase in efficiency in CPA. Additionally, additionally they saw a 79% in checkout volumes. So really great success with this campaign time. Um, Secondly, another success case also from Australia is Adidas. Um, Adidas saw strong results with their Performance Plus shopping campaigns. The Performance Plus shopping campaign not only drove higher revenue for Adidas compared to the control campaign, but also improved key efficiency metrics. They saw an increase of 22% in higher conversion rate and a 40% increase in revenue compared to their control campaign. Additionally, additionally they also saw a 5% increase in ROAS. And... Um, in the case of Jellac, they saw strong results with their Performance Plus shopping campaigns using an A-B test, testing against their traditional conversion campaign. They saw a 23% increase in outbound clicks, which in turn boosted checkout conversions. Pink Jellac saw an increase in their checkouts, which resulted in a 25% increase in ROAS. 
And then also here, a couple of performance plus uh, creative success stories I want to share with you, one from Walgreens and one from Home24. Um, in the case of Walgreens, this is a US case study, Walgreens drove significantly stronger commercial intent by showcasing their retail products in a more Pinterest native experience using Pinterest generated backgrounds. Here they saw a 55% higher click-through rate from generated backgrounds compared to white backgrounds. Additionally, additionally they saw a decrease of 15, 13% or cost uh, per click from generated backgrounds compared to the white backgrounds. So a really great example how to use this tool. And uh, Home24 drove uh, sales by showcasing their home products in a more Pinterest native experience using Pinterest generated backgrounds. They saw a 13% higher click-through rate from generated backgrounds compared to white backgrounds. Additionally, they saw 21% higher click-throughs from Pinterest from performance plus created formats compared to their standard shopping ads. And we know that one of the most asked features has been a preview for the generated backgrounds. And I'm happy to say that we heard you and we generated backgrounds will be now, um, you'll be now able to see them appear in a hidden board for you to preview. So this is something that's uh, yeah brand new, last two days went live. So make sure to check it out when you try these features. And Thanks, Big Lai. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to hand over to Morali. Appreciate it. So as we walk through the Performance Plus creation process, feel free to pull up your Ads Manager account and follow along. I want to start with a high-level view for how to create a Performance Plus catalog sales campaign. At a high level, you can see that we start by selecting your objective, in our case, catalog sales, set the campaign name and status, input your budget and duration, turn on Performance Plus Creative, Performance Plus ensures you have the optimal targeting strategy, and then finish by selecting your optimization and delivery strategy. And we're going to dive deeper into each of these steps. First, when you select your campaign objective, you'll notice the Performance Plus Sparkle indicator near eligible objectives, which are consideration, conversions, and catalog sale, with a little toggle at the bottom to choose to convert your campaign to a Performance Plus campaign. For this walkthrough, let's select the catalog sales campaign objective and turn on performance plus. Next, name your performance plus campaign and ad group. For the catalog sales objective, performance plus automatically creates a prospecting ad group and a dynamic retargeting ad group to drive optimal performance. You have the option to auto generate unique URL tracking parameters to better track performance in your third-party measurement sources of truth. Do so, click the Include URL Parameters checkbox. Finally, remember to set your campaign status as active for it to start spending after publication. Now it's time to select our budget option. You can select Performance Plus Lifetime or Daily Budget, noting that fixed daily budgets cannot be used in Performance Plus campaigns, and set that amount accordingly. We suggest enough budget for a two to four week test. Once you set your budget, input your campaign's duration and order line. Performance Plus Catalog Sales Campaigns use the all product product group to deliver more ads and drive performance. If you need to select a different feed, you can select one using the drop down in the campaign create flow. We recommend leaving on the toggle for creative optimizations, which automatically creates shopping and collections ads at scale. Note, if you're using different feeds for different languages or countries, we recommend creating one performance plus catalog sales campaign per data source. For advertisers with a high number of product pins with white backgrounds, we recommend turning on generate backgrounds to use generative AI to replace your white or blank background product pins with engaging alternatives. After you select that, you will then have the choice for where you want to direct traffic from your ad by selecting either directly to your website to set optional URL tracking parameters or direct traffic to your app if your account has access to mobile deep linking. Next up, you'll notice that there are very few targeting details available in a Performance Plus catalog sales campaign. This is by design, so nothing to worry about. Performance Plus campaigns are powered by Performance Plus targeting, which uses visual search technology to understand a pin's creative content and automatically serves those pins to relevant users without advertisers being required to input keyword or interest data. 
Here you can also set your targeting details, such as excluding states or regions, selecting your audience age, or excluding or including audience lists. We recommend you minimize the number of geo exclusions to avoid shrinking your audience pool. Performance Plus automation works best when it has a wide pool of potential users to optimize and test against. Within Performance Plus catalog sales campaigns, you also have the option to select audiences to include or exclude. Including an audience automatically creates a third auto-generated ad group, while excluding an audience applies that to both the prospecting and retargeting auto-created ad groups. Lastly, Performance Plus campaign solutions only use Performance Plus bidding, no custom bids. The reason being is that Performance Plus bidding dynamically adjusts bids to help deliver the maximum number of outcomes for your budget. When defining your optimization strategy, you can choose your conversion data from either the Pinterest tag or Pinterest conversions API. For users who selected the conversions optimization strategy, you'll need to select from checkout, add to cart, lead, and sign up conversion events. Then you're good to go. With that, I'll hand off to Nick to talk about how Performance Plus campaigns can be analyzed and optimized. Thanks, Morali. While Performance Plus campaigns are automated, there are a number of adjustments you can make to get the most from them. Let's review three steps to get your Performance Plus campaigns set up for success. First, make meaningful investment. Allocate sufficient budget to scale impressions and to find the right users. Generally enough for a two to four week test or five times your cost per action, action goal. Also, Performance Plus conversions and catalog sales campaigns require 50 plus conversions per week to drive the performance lift. Second, provide a variety of ads. We recommend a minimum of 10 ads per ad group, but more is always better. We find the best performers and serve them more often. And if you're using catalog sales objective, an easy win is to use the Performance Plus creative to improve your ad visuals and scale. And thirdly, accurately track your conversions. Make sure you integrate the Pinterest conversions API or have the Pinterest tag, ideally both, for better optimization and improved campaign performance. But let's dive deeper into setting an appropriate spend allocation. Firstly, set your objective based on scale. If you have 50 plus conversions per week, launch a performance plus conversions or performance plus catalog sales campaign. If you don't have that many conversions, start with a performance plus consideration campaign to drive interest in your brand and increase conversion events on the site. Next, know your cost per action goals. Your daily budget should be at least five times that goal. And then we scale up. Gradually increase your budget by 20 to 30% based on in performance. Wait until the campaign exits the learning phase before we raising the budget again. One of the best ways to improve your performance plus catalog sales campaigns is by optimizing your product feeds. Adding rich metadata and SEO keyword optimization, ensuring detailed category product detail information, sorry, Adding rich metadata, SEO keyword optimization, and ensuring detailed category product information helps Performance Plus leverage all the relevant information to help deliver the right outcomes. What does this mean? The more information in your feed, the better your targeting will be. We also recommend using 10 plus ads in Performance Plus campaigns with regular pausing of underperforming ads and replacement of the new ones. One of the new features also available with Performance Plus campaigns is the ability to see in reporting when your campaign is in learning mode. Learning mode signals that the campaign is still calibrating and the results are not stable or indicative of the long-term potential for performance. We recommend that you wait until the campaign has, has been running outside of learning mode for two to four weeks before comparing results to the business as usual campaigns. Additionally, making changes to the budget or creative can reset learning mode as conversion events stabilize. Think of optimizing Performance Plus campaigns as a cycle. First, you launch your Performance Plus campaign. Second, our models learn from your settings, creatives, and shown by your learning mode, and shown, sorry. Second, our models learn by your settings and creatives. 
you want to keep sure make sure that everything is left alone and then thirdly as we exit our learning mode you should review ad performance and pause the underperformers fourth you should replace those ads with new ones and then we just continue to re repeat steps two to five we replace what's not working with new ones and continue on our way this way your campaigns are always learning and relearning with better inputs for cyclical performance gains but what other ways do we have to optimize our ads? You can test various landing pages, your product category and homepage, review your bounce rates by format and creative. You can test mobile deep linking versus non-deep linking if applicable, experiment with different text overlays and call to actions, pause any pins below your campaign KPIs and keep only those that are meeting your goals and perform low performing ad groups. Add at least 10, to 10 new pins to any ad group, test different formats and landing pages to keep improving. As you see, there's plenty of things that we can do even in this new world of Performance Plus to keep our campaigns optimized. Another way to hone in on performance is by editing your targeting details between demographics and audiences. The broader your targeting, the better. So keep Performance Plus campaigns unconstrained where possible. Cons Consequently, Performance Plus campaigns do not support a host of targeting options listed in this slide here. Now I'm going to hand back over to Mikolai to close it. Thank you so much. So yes, let's bring it all together with a six item success checklist for your Performance Plus campaigns. So number one, ensure your proper investment. Set a budget aligned with your Performance Plus goals. Secondly, prepare a mix of creatives, ensure a high volume of ads at launch and additional ads for subsequent optimizations. Thirdly, leverage Performance Plus tools. Use enhancements like Performance Plus Creative or Performance Plus ROAS bidding. Then really most important, be patient. Um, allow learning mode to complete before making changes. Um, follow these best practices, optimize performance through testing and iterating. And then of course, watch your campaigns grow, see the campaigns soar as those optimizations pay off. And whether you're experienced with advertising on Pinterest or just getting started, Pinterest Academy offers a variety of online learning content to help you reach your advertising goals. If you're new to Pinterest, we recommend our Pinterest Advertising Essentials Learning Path. For those looking just to learn more about Performance Plus, we have a series of Performance Plus courses and short videos to help you get started. And we'd love, of course, to hear your feedback on this session. So if you want, you can now scan the QR code to start the survey to fill out the form. Those who will fill out the survey will receive a Performance Plus guide to help you get started on the Performance Plus journey. And with that, um, I would open it for the Q&A. To get us started, a pretty popular question that um, we get a lot about Performance Plus is, um, is there a human review process for generated backgrounds? And the answer is yes. All Performance Plus creative generated backgrounds are reviewed by human reviewers before delivery to catch defects, help drive brand stability, and make sure that what we're presenting um, with those generations looks and feels like part of the platform. Um, another pretty popular question that we get is that if I use performance plus creative optimizations, should I expect the majority of my ads to be collections ads or shopping ads? And the answer is you can expect most of your ads if you're using this feature to be collections ads because they present that kind of hero creative at the top, the secondary shelf images at the bottom, which helps drive better performance. However, we may serve shopping ads where we think that those will drive better performance. There's two pretty popular questions that we've got. I've seen a couple, actually a lot of questions coming in the chat, which is um, within the Q&A, which is great. So, um, Mikolai, I'll hand off to you about um, some yes. of the questions that we've gotten. Yes, sure. go ahead. So one of the questions was, um, could we set up A-B testing in Pinterest dashboard? So at the moment, this is a feature that's internal only, so you can set it up with the help of your account manager or point of contact at Pinterest. But um, as this is something that we see the value in, of course, for um, advertisers, you know, having access to, so we're looking to launch this in the Ads Manager in 2025. Um, so yeah, keep, keep your eyes peeled. It will be coming shortly, although I don't have an exact date at this point. Um, and then another question is, um, when will the samples uh, with generated backgrounds be available to view in the Ads Manager? Um, 
I can't see them at the moment. So samples should be currently viewable in Ads Manager, but the generations, um, like the generated images, um, will have been delivered to you in a protected board to your Pinterest profile. If you can't see it yet, um, reach out and we can have a look at it. This is, again, a brand new feature. I think it's launched two days ago. So um, it might be a market limitation where it hasn't rolled out yet. Um, we'll have to look into it. I also see a question around, will a recording or these slides be shared after the presentation? Uh, taking a step back, yes, a recording will be shared after this presentation. It'll be uploaded to YouTube and sent to you in an email later today. So you'll be able to replay, especially for the walkthrough pieces, if you want to kind of go step-by-step in Ads Manager, what that'll look like. Um, another question that I saw on generated backgrounds was, does the generated background function also work with fashion pictures of models or only for product images without people? And the answer is around eligibility. So generated backgrounds are only eligible for products with white or blank backgrounds and that don't have humans in them. So pins with existing backgrounds um, and or if they have human beings in them, they would not be eligible for generated backgrounds, but you don't need to like go through your catalog and parse out which ones are which. We will automatically identify which ones are eligible if you opt into the feature and only generate backgrounds for eligible pins. So you don't need to kind of like separate things and, and orient it back. Um, with that, I'll hand off to Nick if you want to answer a couple of the questions that I see coming through here. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a couple of questions there around um, uh, product group segmentation and feed. So absolutely in Prime Performance Plus campaigns, unfortunately, you can currently we can only use the feed as it is without um, any product group segmentation. So we can only use the all products feature. However, what we can do and what we have been doing with clients up until now has been creating individual feeds if clients want to actually segment their items. So for example, if a, if a fashion client wants to have um, their men's wear items and their female items, we can create two separate feeds that way and have a female feed and a male feed, and therefore they can run two separate uh, Performance Plus campaigns that way. Um, so at the moment, it is an all products um, product segmentation that's available. However, there are ways to get around that by hacking into our feed. However, this is a great opportunity to talk to your Pinterest account team, and they can reach out to the Performance Solutions team, which is my team, and we can help you do that in the best way possible. This is not something that is unusual. Um, we do do this every day day with clients so please do reach out if this is a requirement um see. i see another question here on um performance plus creative around can you choose the backgrounds or are they being generated in real time um to clarify generated backgrounds cannot be selected ahead of time so you can't be parsing through generations, especially if you have hundreds or thousands of generations. Um, but the reason that um, we have a human review process is to help catch defects and ensure brand suitability. So advertisers who opt into this know that those generations will be reviewed by real people. And after those generations are approved by those real reviewers, you can see a protected board in your account, which will show you all those generations after the fact. So if you go through that board, and you see there are generations that you don't like or you just don't want to be serving, you can delete those from that board and they'll be taken out of delivery. So you have a sort of post-delivery opportunity to remove some of those generations that you may just think you don't want to serve. Um, just I also, jump in oh, yeah, here, Mali. Sorry. Uh, sorry, there's just a question here. Is the two to four week learning period the same for all campaigns, regardless of the daily budget? Um, no, it is not the same for all campaigns. This is another. Uh, this is an instance where uh, this is not a one size fits all situation. It does depend on the number of conversions that are flowing through your uh, your tracking. So if you have a higher volume of conversions that do come through, your learning period might be shorter than somebody who has a smaller volume of conversions. However, we do say that two to four weeks of learning is what we would expect from a standard advertiser with a normal amount of conversions however this does deviate depending on you know outliers but absolutely two 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 weeks would probably be the minimum four weeks would probably be the maximum in terms of exiting the the learning period um let 
Let's keep questions on um, whether it's possible or not to enter keywords in a campaign. That's a performance plus campaign specifically, I assume. Um, that is correct. It is not possible to add or remove keywords within a performance plus campaign. And that's by design, largely because the broader you're targeting on Pinterest, the broader the number of opportunities we have to serve the right creative, the right people. Anything that narrows targeting is actually going to do you more harm than good. You can think of it sort of like that area of focusing on inputs around product feed and quality as opposed to the sort of manual nuts and bolts optimizations like keywords. So um, we intentionally want to keep these campaigns broad. That's why keywords are not available as a targeting option. Um, I also see a question um, around if there's a way to know what changes will put a campaign back into learning mode. Um, the number, the, the kinds of changes here are usually pretty stark ones, like changes to budget, um, significant changes to targeting, like things that would fundamentally change what your campaign is trying to do. I'll take an example of, let's say your budget is a thousand dollars a day, and then you were to up your budget to two thousand dollars a day. Um, kind of like between day one and day two, that's a stark increase in budget and the campaign needs to relearn how to best serve and deliver said budget, that may reset learning mode. That's okay, that's by design. Um, all campaigns on Pinterest use learning mode. Performance plus campaigns are the only ones that visually show it in the UI. So the same behavior that you would think of for all Pinterest, uh, Pinterest campaigns, performance plus is learning mode, doing the same thing, just showing you what that looks like. So I would say, the biggest dark changes will reset learning mode. And that's the same thing that happens to all campaigns. Um, I'm also seeing a question on if it's possible to exclude certain products from performance plus campaigns. And that segmentation piece, I see, I think that's a question that Nick had already covered, so I'll hold off. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was just about yeah. to add that. So, so in this case, I would I would recommend you you upload an individual feed that basically only has those mm -hmm. products you want to advertise because of the logic in which performance plus performance plus works by targeting always all products. So you would have to have essentially a dedicated feed with those products you want to advertise because otherwise you cannot break it out as with your typical shopping campaigns. Absolutely. That's it. And this is not an unusual thing. We do work with advertisers all the time and they have this this type of setup on their accounts. Um, I'm just seeing here a question. How often can we make 20 to 30 percent changes in budget so that we ensure we don't go back into learning mode? Uh, our general rule of thumb is no more than twice a week. So if you're going to make a budget in increase on a Monday, then don't do it again until Wednesday or Thursday, or if Tuesday, do it on Friday, but leave maybe 48 hours in between each budget increase. A uh, general rule of thumb is don't more than double your budget in one go. So double up and half down. So you can go from 100 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 to 800. And then the same on the way back down, you can go from 400 to 200, 200 to 100, 100 to 50 and so forth. And again, twice a week is the best way to ensure your clients, sorry, to ensure your campaigns don't enter uh, learning mode again. Yeah. Uh, it, will there be a retargeting? Sorry, I'm just checking when you said there a, a retargeting and prospecting division of the. Yes, there is. You can see when you set up your campaigns, as Morelli showed us uh, during the creation flow there. Uh, when you're setting up your campaigns, you can see the, the setup between the targeting and prospecting ad groups within a campaign. Um, it is part of the standard setup flow for the for the performance plus campaigns. Yeah. And then maybe I can take the question around whether it's mainly for physical products or not. I think that is something that, well, you can't flat out say you cannot sell courses. I think generally speaking, the majority of products and advertisers on Pinterest are selling physical products. So um, there speaks nothing against, you know, you testing it, but um, it's not the typical use case, I would say in this case. No, we we, we definitely have clients who are selling more yeah. um, um non-physical goods if you if you can ex and spend that um so it, it's not a requirement uh we have lots of travel clients as well who would sell things um like holidays and things like that so i mean absolutely it's not something that you need to buy a physical good we do have a lot of clients as well who sell music online uh books as well ebooks um and online courses yes we do have those clients so 
I saw a question about um, success stories that we shared being large companies. What about small companies with limited budgets or resources? Can they succeed with Performance Plus? And the answer is absolutely. So one example was a company known as Flash Prey. They're a small, medium-sized business. Um, they saw Performance Plus campaigns deliver a 33% lower CPA um, for checkout. They saw a 59% increase in outbound clicks, a 63% decrease in CPC. Um, that kind of stark changeover came from using that kind of business as usual approach and pivoting to um, a Performance Plus campaign setup. Another example of a small business um, is Bartesian. Bartesian is um, a mixology company. Um, they also improved their performance with an 11% decrease in CPC, a 41% decrease in CPM as a small and medium business by shifting to Performance Plus campaigns versus their traditional non-Performance Plus campaign setup. So you definitely can succeed independent of company size with Performance Plus. And in fact, if you're a small or medium sized business that doesn't have huge resources or huge staffing, this is ideal for you because it's automated. It's going to take a lot of that effort out of your day. So you can focus on what's most important for your business beyond that. I also saw a question here. Oh yeah, go ahead, Nick. No, I was just going to say, absolutely. This is a phenomenal like change in the world of like the looking after your campaigns. It's so much easier in terms of like setting it up and monitoring and measuring. I mean, it is just, it's a whole new world. Really it is. Absolutely. Um, I saw two questions on minimum budget to use Performance Plus. Um, if we go back to some of the guidance that was shared earlier, um, you can think of budget based on, if you know your cost per action goal, your daily budget should be roughly 5x that goal to start. And once you have that kind of budget sort of start going for a bit and you're seeing success, the way you scale up is by gradually increasing your budget by 20 to 30% based on performance like Nick had covered earlier. So. Um, if you have budgeting questions, you can also reach out to your account team who can help advise you on what the best approach is. But generally, if you know your cost per action goal, 5x that, and that'll help you with kind of running it uh, across a two to four week time period. There's a question just coming in about duplicating campaigns. So do you recommend duplicating P plus campaigns when scaling or just increasing the budget? Uh, we do recommend just increasing the budget. Uh, absolutely. If it's within the guidelines of with not more than doubling. Um, so if it is more than just do it in stages across an, the week or, an, or a couple of weeks. And can duplicating result in your campaigns competing against each other? Absolutely not. No, we do not compete against ourselves in auction, not at all. It will never happen ever in Pinterest. We do not allow that to happen. So 100%, you don't have to worry about that. Um, even if you do duplicate your own campaigns um, and you decide to run two of them, it does not mean you will compete against yourself at auction. So don't worry about that. Um, it just, in terms of measuring and tracking and keeping your UI as nice and clean and tidy as possible, it's probably just easier to add the additional budget to the campaign that you already have running as opposed to setting up a new one because then you just have more to measure basically. And then there's a question around, you know, selling rugs in the AI background. So whether this would be putting them into a room or just overlay the background, um, you would. It depends pretty much on on the image. So what you can do is you can have a look in the examples in Performance Plus, uh, how this, how the different examples of the generated backgrounds look. And then obviously, if you toggle it on, uh, if you toggle it on, you can then now see it in a uh, secret board for you how those would look. So it's pretty much dependent, you know. On the product but um yes i have clients who sell rugs and they do this they do use that feature so it depends very much on the uh, on the initial image how it would look but there's nothing that would say you shouldn't be doing it question just came in here is it fine to double the budget every 48 to 72 hours um well now Technically, yes. However, you just want to keep an eye on your performance. As Morali went through earlier, when we do increase the budget, the system does have to relearn what to do with this additional budget because the model has been trained to deal with a certain amount of budget that knows, hey, I have to learn what to do with $200 today. And if we suddenly make that $400, the system has to kind of go, okay, well, where am I going to spend this additional money and who am I going to give it to? So it needs to learn. And if we're doing that every few days, it can basically just prolong that learning period a lot longer than we would like. Um, so potentially maybe keep it, a, a, um, the, the, the budget changes a little bit 
uh, more stretched out than every 48 to 72 hours it might be easier to just start with a higher budget and, and start there as opposed to starting smaller and building yourself up. It's just remember every time we add budget, the system does have to say, what am I going to do with this and where is it going to go? So it is bring, going to bring you back into learning mode again. Um, I see a question what? here. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nick. No, no, go ahead, Riley. I see a question here about for the 50 conversions per week requirement. Is that per campaign or per ad group? That's per, uh, per excuse me, ad, per ad account. It's per ad account. We want to make sure that you have sufficient conversion volume. This way, we know that if we are optimizing for conversions, that we can expect to have enough info for our models and algorithm to say, yes, this is how we can drive sufficient volume. Um, without a uh, that kind of number of conversions, it's harder for the, our models to learn, um, especially in a reasonable time frame. Eventually, they'll get there, but it may be on a time frame that is not, you know, profitable or not one that is uh, efficient enough to keep the campaign spending. So, 50 is a kind of good guideline across the ad account. If you do not have that amount of uh, conversions, that's okay. I suggest using a performance plus consideration campaign to drive high quality brand traffic to your site. And then once you have that site traffic, you see the conversions starting to increase, you can launch a new campaign for performance plus conversions or catalog sales if you have the sufficient tagging. Um, and that way you're, you're setting yourself up for success. A uh, question here, if the campaign is in learning mode for too long, is it a sign that it might struggle to be finding the audience that converts? Um, absolutely. We may need to revisit the targeting and what we're doing in terms of uh, the campaign setup. But this is this is where we talk to our account team and your account team will reach out to the performance solutions team. And we will work to see what is actually going on behind the scenes and how we can improve performance. Uh, Pinterest does have a dedicated team that works with our um, sales uh, sales teams to help ensure that all of our campaigns are set up for success and running to their optimal um, performance levels. So if a campaign is in a prolonged learning learning mode, this is absolutely when we reach out to your Pinterest account team and we figure out what's going on there. We dive in. Uh, we can't tell you here what it is because everything is going to be a unique uh, situation based on the account. But absolutely, yes, it's probably going to be something that we'll need to have a look at and potentially give you um, some recommendations on how to to improve performance. Um, is it common for campaigns to go back into learning mode without any changes made? No, unfortunately, that would not be common. And again, a great reason for you to reach out to your account team so they can reach out to us and we can then go talk to engineering and go, hey, what's happening here? Um, so yeah, absolutely. It's another one of those uh, situations where you do need to talk to us and we will then figure out what's going on in the background for you. is looking here. I'm seeing a, a question here around, um, I've seen that for the conversions objective, it's only possible to work in prospecting mode unless customer lists are uploaded. Is there a way to implement customer lists that allows updating on a daily basis? Uh, so customer list behavior, uh, including refreshes and those uploads, um, is not affected by performance plus being a setting or not. So if you're using a performance plus campaign, not using a performance plus campaign, customer list behavior should be the same in terms of refreshes, how often you need to upload. So I wouldn't think of the way that you need to maintain a customer list to be any different if you're using a performance plus campaign. And with that, I think we are at time. So I'll hand off uh, to Mikolai to close the panel. Yes. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. If you have any questions uh, that you want to pass on, please reach out to your account team and we will try to answer all your questions if anything is pending. Um, yeah, thank you very much for attending and hope you learned something today.